All right, <clears throat> it is just about seven o'clock and we're gonna get started because I wanna make sure that um, we are valuing everyone's time today. So hello, hello, welcome. As you know, I am Liz. Um, happy 2023, it's our first meeting of the new year, uh, which is great because that means that, uh, let me check my screen here, how many days until our trip? Who knows, who can do it? 183. We have 183 days until our trip. So that is very exciting. Um, and over here in Syracuse, I've been getting into some Japanese food. So hopefully you too have been getting into some Japanese food where you are. Um, I have some things to show you slash eat with you tonight um, that I just picked up at Wegmans uh, along the way. And I made, I actually made this for dinner tonight. This is the Japanese curry. If you were um, on the call when Catherine was here from um, a couple of weeks ago, um, she recommended this and I made it and it is delicious. Not gonna lie. Uh, it's the, probably the best thing that I've had in a long time. So it came in like this little um, tray and there are like little five cubes in there kind of look like chocolate actually. Um, and I went to the store and I got some reduced for quick sale meat because I'm a big fan of that um because we're gonna braise it so i cooked it for a very long time um in my dutch oven today and uh i just kind of browned up the meat i put carrots and potatoes and other things in there onions and garlic and that sort of thing um added a cube of this and some water and then i just cooked it forever um and so hopefully show it to you this where's my camera this is what it looks like it actually <laughs> looks exactly like the picture uh, there's little carrots in there. I put some carrots. Like I said, I used a, what kind of meat did I use? Chuck roast, like an eye, eye roast of some kind. Um, and so I braised that for hours because it's a tough piece of meat. Um, and then little potatoes. So it looks exactly like the picture. It tastes phenomenal. I would highly recommend this. I was actually thinking about um, doing, they have like a medium hot variety of this kind as well. And I was thinking of like, chunking up the medium hot variety and putting a couple of cubes in it to see how that would go. I am a giant baby, as you all know, when it comes to heat and spice, which I'm going to try to get over when I go to Japan, because as you all know, uh oh, I lost it already. Um, there's a lot of that wasabi there. I like horseradish. So, or, you know, like around Easter time, I eat horseradish with beets. I don't know if you've ever had horseradish with beets in it. It's delicious. Um, bright red and It'll dye everything in your house bright red, but it's pretty delicious. Anyways, so highly recommend the Japanese golden curry. If you get a chance, go to Wegmans. It was like $3.79 for that thing. Um, and with the reduced for quick sale meat, <laughs> I feel like I always have to do that when I'm talking about cheap meat. Um, it was not a very expensive meal. And if that's the food that I'll be looking forward to in Japan, it was pretty delicious. So I would highly recommend. So while I was at Wegmans, I also got myself some of this stuff. So this is a crunchy um, California roll. If you've gotten sushi from Wegmans before, it's pretty Americanized sushi. Um, anyone out there know what the sushi is referring to in this? There's a lot of like, what is sushi and what's it made out of? And does it always involve raw fish? Anyone know? Who wants to tell me what sushi is? Like, what's it made out of? Why is it called sushi and that sort of thing? Anyone? You feel free to unmute yourself. There's only, I don't know, 12 of us, 16 of us in this call. So feel free to unmute yourself. This is a crunchy uh, volcano roll, maybe. And it's pretty delicious. Anyone? Who knows what it is? <laughs> so the sushi refers to the rice. The rice is the main ingredient in sushi. You can get vegetarian sushi. I've had that at Wegmans as well. Um, but like I said, this is California, I think I said California roll before. Um, it's very Americanized, but it's also delicious. So um, Wegmans, if you are eating something like California roll, um, it doesn't actually have any crab in it. I know it looks like crab, that little pink piece right in there with the avocado and the cucumber. It's not, it's fish. It's a fish called Pollock. So if you are concerned, if you have a shellfish allergy and you want to try sushi, but you're not really sure because it has crab and, um, you know, some sort of things in it sometimes that you might be allergic to, if you're not allergic to fish in general, give the California roll a try. It's almost always Pollock. 
Um, it is not real crab. I've tried to make it with real crab myself and it's very salty. Um, so I have not done that again. <laughs> So, but you live and you learn, right? And also like real crab is super expensive. <laughs> so probably don't do that. Just eat the crab on its own. Um, does anyone, if you follow on Facebook, anyone know what these are called? Chopsticks. Chopsticks, yeah. Anyone, does anyone remember what they call them in Japan? Hasi. But I'm learning the more I look into Japanese, who's got, Who's in the chat here? Oh, Sarimi. What's Sarimi? Is it a is that the chopsticks? No, that is um the pollock that is pseudo crab is actually Sarimi is the technical term for it. Oh, very good. So hi Christina. This is Christina. And um sorry, I didn't mean to like I sent out I know, hi. Food plane. Um we sent out a couple of weeks ago, I think before Christmas break, I sent out an email about buddy requests. Um, because we have about 58 or so folks traveling with us, which is not reflective in these meetings because there's only about 18 of us right now. Um, but overall, we have about 56, like I said, between 56 and 58 folks traveling with us, which means that we're going to be splitting up into two buses. And my good friend Christina down there on my screen, but wherever she is on your screen, um, is going to be your other group leader. So some of you will go with Christina and some of you will go with me and we're going to split up on the buses and we're going to do all the fun things. So just wanted to say a hi and a welcome to Christina. Um, anyone remember how to say hello in Japanese to Christina? My son just taught me this the other night too, and I'm ashamed that I can't repeat it. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Konnichiwa. <laughs> yep. And if you want to say good evening, I feel like I remember it being konbanwa. It is konbanwa. Konbanwa. Thank you, Ellie. Yes. So we have been actively learning some Japanese along the way. So there we go. So we're talking about sushi. And if you, oh, there's Sue Stukas. There's my other uh, chaperone. So we have a couple of chaperones on the call. Sue um, is here and she will be joining us as well. So if your kiddo and or you are traveling um, with us solo, um, you can look forward to saying hello to Sue Stukas. She's gonna be on the bus with a lot of our solo travelers. I think I see, who else? I thought I saw Lauren, but maybe not. Maybe she got kicked out. Um, I'm trying to be very conscious here of the waiting room. Actually, maybe Christina, I'm gonna make you a co-host just in case so that you too can let people in from the wait room. There we go, perfect. And so, my, I, oh, I was just going to say that my, Travel buddy chaperone is not on. I think she'll probably try to come on next month. And what's nice is we're actually getting some extra schooling because her niece lived in Japan for a year going to university. Amazing. So she has been filling Natalie in on like all the little tips and tricks to like when you go into a store, everyone is super polite and you are compelled to be like, hey, how are you? <laughs> cool because manners yep. um, we're talking about that over the weekend yes and that sort of thing is going to be very helpful as we're moving forward um and getting closer to our trip because the more excited we are um i know me i'm like <laughs> um, since you all have been with me for a little uh, less than a year now, you know that I am that person. Um, so we are going to continue to watch videos and, and talk to folks who have been to Japan and experienced the culture um, to see uh, polite ways to interact with folks that live there. So, um, but right now we're talking about, so here's what's going to happen in this meeting. Actually, now I'll, I'll just sort of talk about what's happening this evening. So I'm going to continue to, so this is very bad, by the way, <laughs> what I'm doing with these chopsticks. Hasi. Um, so I'm going to put it in the, I'm going to put it in the chat, this Hasi. So I'm learning that I want to say Hashi, but that's not how it's pronounced. It's with an S, like a Hasi, not Hashi. Um, so I'm trying to fix that, but I'm also trying to fix not pointing at people with my chopsticks because apparently that is very rude to do in Japan. So don't do that. These are my own personal chopsticks that I have. I feel like they're a little bit slick. It's hard for me to pick things up with, but I'm not, I'm of course blaming it on the chopsticks, <laughs> but it's most probably user error. Um, so the ones you can get at Wegmans or uh, sushi or hibachi restaurants as well, come in these little papers. If you wanna start uh, practicing your chopsticks, 
or you're happy, you can always pick up a pair um, at your local grocery store, Asian market, whatever. Pick up some Asian food to go along with it. And these are attached to each other. Uh, and you can just, oh no, I've never done that before. You can just break them apart um, and then you can use them at home and you can start practicing. I don't know if this is the correct way to hold chopsticks. I'm hoping it is, but I hold them like I would a pencil. And then the top part, I just kind of use to grab. So let's go ahead and give that a try, shall we? I'm gonna take bets on whether or not I can do this. Oh, there it is. <laughs> ah, look at that. <laughs> not too shabby. I will not eat that. So that's, uh, I can continue to help you. Um, so <coughs> these and start practicing. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if that's really the right way to hold them. I don't think it matters so much um, as long as you're trying. So that's also what I'm learning is that um, trying your best is the best way to go. Because really, even if you're doing it incorrectly, someone's either going to correct you or they're going to give you props for trying. So, I, Laura, are you trying to talk to us or are you just chilling on your phone? Nope, you muted yourself. Okay. Um, I have learned that it's not a good idea to hold them up here. So if you're holding them a little bit too high, it's going to be a lot harder for you to pick things up with. Um, so hold them down towards the end here. And I found on YouTube, which we're not going to watch tonight, an entire video. Actually, there's tons of videos about what not to do with your chopsticks. So I'm learning and trying to research for this trip that um, there are tons of videos out there about what not to do, how not to eat sushi, which we're going to watch tonight, how not to use chopsticks, how not to enter a store, how not to do this, how not to do that. Um, and so the tricky thing about learning how to interact in Japanese culture is we're going to have to try to learn all the things we shouldn't be doing in order to learn the things that we need to be doing, right? So it's going to be kind of a, a different way of learning. Um, so anyway, so I got this uh, sushi from Wegman. Not all sushi, like I said, has raw fish. You can get vegetarian sushi, you can get cooked sushi. Um, I don't really prefer the taste of salmon. Um, and I'm not sure if it's because I haven't eaten the right kind of salmon possibly in the right preparation or you know things like that and I don't think I've ever eaten it raw um so I might is salmon is raw salmon a thing Christina I know you enjoy salmon so much better, so much better? okay so I'm going to challenge myself I think to eat raw salmon possibly when I go to it lives in the ocean right <laughs> I don't know anything about salmon is it good I mean um did you did you end up making sushi for your family was that a picture that i saw was that you um no someone did maybe it was elliot someone on the maybe not on the call um i know over break made sushi for the yeah. family but ellie what do you what do you want to weigh in with what do you want to say salmon typically and i remember this from a random bill nye video if i remember correctly was it um ocean most of the year then goes upstream to lay eggs Oh, and yeah. that's typically when it's caught. Oh, Bill Nye, teaching the new generation. Yay, very cool. Okay, well, that makes sense because I, I associate salmon with like Alaska and Alaska is pretty close to Japan. So there you go. Yeah. Fantastical. Um, so I'm going to try that. Has anyone else over the break or any time recently or ever really ever eaten raw fish on their sushi? What's that like? Tell us about that experience. I'm curious. Yeah, go ahead, Christina. Um, I love it. You're a little low. I think you might be away, uh, like farther away from your microphone then. Yeah. Nope. Nope. I don't know what to tell you because you don't want my background noise. I don't know. It sounds like maybe it's not in, like that, maybe not in the thing all the way. Nope. Now we can't hear you at all. Oh. Bonus. Oh, that, we can. that might be better. Okay, I'll do yeah, this. And that's better. Whatever happens behind me, you'll just, we'll practice forgiveness. Um, so I love sushi and I love um, tuna, ahi tuna, mm -hmm. right? And um, and I love sushi, sashimi, 
which is without the rolling up. It's just like the, basically the chunks of raw fish. But I did learn very early on, probably about 25, 30 years ago, that I have a threshold for when there's too much of that. Hmm. <laughs> because it's rich, like tuna and salmon and uh, like those foods are very rich. They're very fatty fish. Mm -hmm. And so you can meet your max on that very quickly because it's such a rich, oily fish. Um, but it's lovely. Absolutely. I don't know. It is a very firm texture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not slimy at all. If it's slimy, you probably shouldn't eat it because it probably means that it's not like cool anymore. Um, <laughs> Well, so here, I highly... from New York, we're pretty landlocked, right? So sometimes it's hard for me to choose, like, I might eat that raw fish and but, we don't yeah, live in the and, ocean, so. And, and Ellie just mentioned about Wegmans and absolutely, mm -hmm. like, I, that is my favorite. Oh, everyone at home is, has eaten and I just need to grab something quick for myself. Mm -hmm. That is, um, like it's a wonderful go-to. It's always fresh. It's always lovely. I, I would highly recommend it. And it's an easy way to um, try it without putting yourself in a place where if I don't like <laughs> this, I'm going to starve for the next five hours. Right. Um, and I, like I said, I went to Wegmans earlier and got this California roll. Um, and I noticed that they, Wegmans really has been like, and this is not a paid endorsement for Wegmans, but um, they have really been upping their sushi game. And I noticed today they had beautiful, it looked like tuna, ahi tuna and salmon and some other raw fishes. Um, just in that sashimi, that was it. It wasn't a roll, it wasn't anything. Um, I also got some of this stuff, which I've had before, seaweed salad, oh, um, so which is delicious. It tastes like the ocean. So this seaweed salad, I'm gonna take them out and show it to you. It has obviously seaweed in it. I don't know if you can see that, right? It's this bright green, very bright green. Um, it's as soon as you open it up, you smell sesame, sesame oil, which I know is in there, probably rice vinegar. Um, there's definitely some sesame seeds in there. And I am like, I don't know, seaweed, I'm uncertain about eating this, but it's delicious and it tastes like the ocean and I love the ocean. So um, there's really, and sesame oil, honestly, is one of my favorite things as well. So if you get a chance, they have this at Wegmans. They don't make it there. I think it probably comes from someplace else, but this is good. And Christina, I feel like you want to say something about seaweed. I love seaweed. <laughs> um, you can also <laughs> you can also get like in um, where they have the snack foods, you can get like the plastic, I don't know, it's individually wrapped mm -hmm. little packages, a little sleeve of like nori, right? Like all salted and rolled out flat and crispy and lovely. Mm -hmm. And it's a yummy little snack. And um, yeah, so my kiddo used to eat this when he was three and he did like walk around with like green stuff all over his teeth. It was pretty fun. <laughs> but it's really tasty, yummy stuff. And you're right, it does taste like the sea. A little bit. So I'm gonna say that probably if you can, get a chance to try some of these things before we go on this trip. Um, these are flavors that, yes, we're here in America, but this is pretty close to what we're gonna be eating in Japan while we're there. Um, I also, as I mentioned, um, have been watching the Eat Japan. It's on TikTok, but I think they have an Instagram and that sort of thing. It's a really good um, thing to follow if you wanna see just kind of everyday life. Um, and I've been learning about convenience stores lately. Um, and how there's everything in a convenience store. Has anyone else looked into convenience stores in Japan? <laughs> there, it's crazy. You could get your whole alley, yes. You can get a whole, like, probably we wouldn't ever have to go into a restaurant if we ever, if we didn't want to on lunches and whatnot. You could just find yourself a mall or a convenience store and just straight up eat from there. So on this trip, usually our breakfast and our dinners are included. So we'll all go someplace together um, to eat dinner together at a restaurant that our tour guide has chosen. For breakfast, typically it's at the hotel, uh, wherever we're staying the next morning, we'll have a breakfast for us. Um, but lunch is usually on our own. So this is gonna be a time for us to try out new things, to try new flavors. Um, there are two other things that I'm really looking forward to eating um, in Japan, and those are ramen which is your typical, when you think about um, Asian food, a lot of times ramen is something that you immediately think of. My other favorite thing to eat is gyoza. Have you ever heard of gyoza before? I'll put it in the chat. 
Anyone? Ellie, have you heard of this one? I know you're all about your Japanese food lately. <laughs> yeah. I have, yeah. but I can't quite remember what it was. <laughs> They're sitting on okay. Gyoza is like a dumpling, kind of. Um, so it's not like a soup dumpling that you would see, like a Korean soup dumpling um, or something that's like round. It's more like a pot sticker. So if you've ever seen a pot sticker before, uh, gyoza is similar to that. And it usually has pork or chicken in it. Um, and then you sort of pan fry it with sesame oil and eat it with chopsticks and it's delicious. So they also have that at Wegmans. They also have it at Trader Joe's and, and all, all sorts of things. So there's definitely a lot of um, Asian Japanese food kicking around and you can find it pretty much everywhere. So give it a try. Just eat ramen from Japanese restaurant. Yeah, it's the soft boiled eggs. Who's got a trick for me? I love the soft boiled eggs. My favorite part of the ramen. Don't be afraid of the soft boiled egg. <laughs> delicious yep Caitlin Caitlin Healy are you from Syracuse are you from the Syracuse area is that the right Caitlin that I'm thinking yep you sure are um which one did you go to we actually went out to the mall in Utica oh in Utica oh you're okay so you're Rome you're like sort of Rome, Rome. right I'm yeah thinking of, yep a good one on Erie Boulevard is Mitsubi Mitsubi oh yes Mitsubi um I went to Yamasho this weekend and that's down on Onondaga Boulevard there's also one called AT Sushi which is new on Erie Boulevard uh if you're in Syracuse which is excellent as well I'm sorry your Vestal Binghamton folks I don't know of any good sushi restaurants down that way but if you do feel free to visit take some pictures take a video of what you're eating and post them on our Facebook page so that we can see what you all are up to um, with regards to some of this food, so yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to show you a video. Ready to watch a video? <laughs> all right. So this is I've just been kind of like in the depths of um, YouTube <laughs> and what to watch, and I have found so many new things. We're not going to watch. Um, how the do's and don'ts for using chopsticks because it's very long. There's a lot of do's and don'ts about using chopsticks. So if you get a chance, um, possibly check that out a little bit later. You can just YouTube it. Um, this person that I'm going to put up right now is um, really good, actually. Oops. Oh, that's his chopstick thing. It's too long. I can't do it. <laughs> Let me bring this up here real quick. So, where's my history? Um, definitely watch the how not to or things not to do with your chopsticks. Specifically and most importantly, never, if you get the urge to stick your chopsticks up, down, up and down, straight up and down in your food, never do that. Apparently that's um, indicative of a funeral. So you definitely don't want to do that. So let me find my... Anyone have anything they would like to share? Oh, Kampai and Fuji-san, both delicious, Danielle Haynes says. All right, so does anyone have anything, any food things they wanna share while I'm trying to load up this video here? Anything they tried? Anything that they really liked? Something that they tried maybe and you didn't like? Um, any sort of food things that you want to eat while you're in Japan? Um, feel free to drop it in the chat or unmute yourself and take it away. I can't be the only one who wants to eat my way through Japan. <laughs> I'm doing the wrong sticker. There we go. What's going on in the uh, chat? Anything? Oh my goodness. All right, there we go. I finally got them down. Please hold. The buns with the red bean paste. Did you eat that, Ellie, or did you want to eat that? Is that a want or a did? Want to. 
want to, yes. So I have also seen these on a lot of the videos that I've watched and people allegedly get it messed up with chocolate um, to a kind of a surprise, like, hey, it's not chocolate. <laughs> so we'll see how they go. It's good, it's good stuff, but it's definitely not chocolate. Um, Moki, flour rice ball with ice cream type of dessert. That sounds delicious. Ramune, is that it, Christina? Ramyun? I have no clue how you say it, but it's a super fun little um, novelty. Ramune. Ramune. That makes more Ramune. sense. Yep. Is Ellie in my group? Is yeah. Ellie in my group? Because I feel like I need Ellie in my group. <laughs> no. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yes, Ramune. That sounds like it's better. Yep. Cool mushroom ramen bowl. Monkey. Yep. Teriyaki chicken. Yes, I had that um, when I went to the Yamasho. I had that in the bento box. So bento box is, um, it's like a lunch box and you can, it has little uh, compartments for different things. Um, and the teriyaki chicken was delicious. Homemade ramen for dinner. Yep. Did you put a soft boiled egg in it too, Hallie? I don't like soft boiled eggs, sadly. <laughs> that is okay to each their own, right? Uh, However, that is a very old dislike. So maybe now I do. You never know, up to try new things. Um, the last time I took a trip, we went to Italy and Greece. We had a girl called Allie um, and she ate everything. No matter what it looked like, no matter what it was, it was on her plate and she tried every single thing. So I'm gonna challenge myself to be like Allie on this, uh, this trip and try all the things. All right, I want, what are those things? I keep seeing them in the ramen. They're like white and they have like a little spiral, like a, a pink or a red spiral in the middle of it. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I always see them like when I see a picture of ramen. It's supposed to be a fish patty, but I'm not really sure what it is. <laughs> Interesting, okay. I'll have more things to Google, I think probably when I'm done with this. All right, so I'm gonna show you just this quick video here. Um, and I thought it was pretty funny because it's, as I mentioned, things that you don't wanna do um, when you are eating sushi. Let's see, I've got to share my, hold on, my thing. Share sound. All right, so here we go, ready? No, then I got my I sweets. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Enjoyment and the hospitality oh, of the yeah, person right? who made it. There we go. How the dish looks, in this case, sushi, like this is part, part of the enjoyment and the hospitality of the person who made it. Destroying too much of its form before eating it is considered disrespectful. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. I'm very sure that for many people, one of the things that you're drooling to eat in Japan is sushi, right? Yes, sushi is one of Japan's traditional cuisines that have centuries of history. And they are, of course, one of the most delicious things you can eat in Japan. However, because it has such a long history and can be regarded as a very luxurious meal, there are actually quite a lot of taboos and rules regarding eating sushi. So today, as a Japanese man who could eat sushi every day, I will explain the five taboos related to eating sushi. The taboos will get more and more critical towards the end, so I hope you can check them all out. By the way, my favorite sushi is sea bream and salmon. If you have any favorites, please let me know in the comments below. This video will be perfect for those who are willing to come to Japan someday to learn more about the culture and enjoy eating sushi. And as I always say in these manner videos, many Japanese people too don't know about these rules or make mistakes. And the purpose is just to reassure my viewers who are a little nervous about possibly being rude at restaurants. So please just keep the things I introduced today somewhere in your mind. And when you actually come, please just fully enjoy the meal as you like. So now, today, let's eat and eat. Let's eat. Let's eat. Hey man, are you Alpocalypse 423? Yeah. What's the deal? You got me running all over the place, day and night. Oh, I have Spectrum now. Fast.
One, not eating it immediately. Not eating the offered sushi as soon as possible is considered a taboo because the shari sushi rice will dry and the flavor and taste of the neta toppings will change. There's no need to rush, but please keep in mind that from the moment sushi is served, the taste is declining. By not eating it immediately, not only will you miss its best taste, but it's also rude to the chef that made the sushi for you. This is also the reason why you must be careful of taking pictures of sushi, because taking too much time might make the restaurant staff feel a little unpleasant too. Putting soy sauce on the rice. You should never put soy sauce on the rice because of three reasons. One, you could accidentally put too much soy sauce. Two, the rice will fall apart. Three, some rice might fall into the soy sauce plate and it will look dirty. The best way to put soy sauce on the sushi topping is to first tilt the sushi sideways and then pick it up. Be careful not to put too much soy sauce on because it will change the original taste of the sushi. It's best to put just a little bit on the tip of the topping. Three, putting gunkan in the soy sauce. Gunkan is a type of sushi that has the nori seaweed wrapped around it. We just learned that putting soy sauce on the rice is inappropriate. But the topping of these gunkan type sushi will fall apart if we try to tilt it. Then how will we put soy sauce on it? We actually use gari, which are vinegar pickled ginger slices that will always be served along with sushi. They are originally meant to refresh your mouth in between eating different kinds of sushi, but they can also be used almost like a brush to put soy sauce on the gunkan. By the way, the standard type of sushi you might imagine is called nigiri, which literally means to grip. And gunkan actually means warship because they look like it when seen from the side. Warship. Maybe. Four. Separating the fish and rice. Recently, even among the Japanese, there are some people who just eat the topping and leave the rice because they want to suppress the amount of calories they take. However, this act is like eating just the meat inside a burger and throwing away the rest. And it is considered nasty and very rude to the chef who made it. Always eat the fish and rice together. And if you really don't need the rice, please order sashimi instead. Every sushi restaurant can absolutely prepare sashimi for you. Five, not eating it in one bite, breaking the sushi. As I've also explained in my video where I talked about the taboos using chopsticks, how the dish looks, in this case sushi, is part of the enjoyment and the hospitality of the person who made it. Destroying too much of its form before eating it is considered disrespectful. Always eat the sushi in one bite. And if it's too big for you, it's not impolite to ask for a smaller cut of the fish or less rice. 
Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduce the five taboos regarding eating sushi. One, not eating it immediately. Please keep in mind that from the moment the sushi is served, the taste is declining. Two, putting the soy sauce on the rice. Put soy sauce only on the tip of the topping by tilting the sushi to the side when you pick it up. Three, 2023, so your help is what I need. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy the Unmuting myself there. So those are some good, I guess, tips, taboos. Um, his video of using the proper way to use chopsticks and your taboos of using chopsticks, hash, hash, hashi, was the one that I was talking about. <clears throat> so his series is called Ask a Shogun. Um, so if you like watching YouTube videos on things like that, feel free to check him out. Um, escaped that and I don't want that and there we go. So um, any other things that anyone wants to talk about or mention regarding some of the food types? I did find some videos about eating ramen, like the top three things to look for in a ramen um, and gyoza and things like that. Like I said, the internet is full of wild and wacky stuff. That ginger looked a lot better than the ginger that comes in this little packet, by the way, <laughs> that I got from Wegmans. So um, ginger, the palate cleanser, right? So anyways, um, anyone want to talk about any sort of food things that they're really looking forward to eating and or anything else regarding some food for tonight? Alex, did you want to? Unmute yourself. I'm really looking forward to trying fresh mochi. Ooh, what's that? Uh, so it's what they were, uh, what someone commented in the chat what it was. Um, Toby, he said uh, it's a rice, it's a flour rice bowl. Oh. Um, so I don't only have ice cream inside of them. They, there's also green tea ones you can get that have like a gel, like kind of a jelly inside of them that you can get and i'm really excited i get them at wegman sometimes and i'm really excited to try fresh one nice excellent yes anybody else oh we figured out what the little spirally thing was that's good what is this link that you've posted in there christina it is those little spirally things oh that's what it is and okay. it is a whole article mm -hmm. about them awesome um, what it tastes like, what it's used for, all the good things, all the stuff. Amazing. Excellent. So check out the little spirally things. Um, Naruto, Naruto Maki, Naruto Maki. So Christina, we have learned from some of our language lessons that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, people that are in here listening, uh, Japanese, the language is like a non, um, shoot, what do you call it? Not, there's like no, not a lot of inflection, right? So like syllables, when you you hit syllables a certain way in our language, and I forget what, what it's called, um, but like I would wanna say like Narutomaki, but really that's, you're supposed to be very flat in your in intonation and your syllables when speaking Japanese, and I need to work on that. <laughs> Anyone else having troubles with that? <laughs> Does that mean that every vowel separates a syllable too? That is a good question. I will have to rewatch my intro to Jap Alex, Japanese. Do <laughs> you want to weigh in and help me because pronunciation is the death of me? No. Uh, actually, I was going to say something different. So okay. I went to speech therapy for a few years. So my biggest problem with learning Japanese is that the like when they write it out in the English language, some of the ways I have to pronounce those combinations of the of English characters are the exact opposite of how I had to train myself to pronounce. Like it's how I had to work on not pronouncing them. So I keep slipping up because I keep messing up like some of the character group since I'm trying to unlearn what I learned to speak English correctly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. That's that's exactly right. I'm also like I'm I'm I have like French and Spanish and Italian. The romance languages are in my brain and it's hard to get rid of some of that pronunciation. Um, of other, if you, you know, if you take Spanish in high school or French in high school, it can be hard to unlearn some of that stuff as well. 
The black eggs hard boiled in the hot springs. What is that? Allison, can you unmute yourself and tell us about that? Okay, sorry, I couldn't figure it out. Um, okay. Yeah, so I guess in some of the hot springs, there's they're regular eggs, but they're boiled and the, the hot springs are sulfuric, so they turn black. And it's said that if you eat one, it adds seven years to your life. Oh, <laughs> wait, the good years right now or like the old years? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'll take but... the years. <laughs> oh, wait for the minute. good ones. <laughs> um, I think these are different than the century eggs because I can see that Caitlin put the century. So the century eggs are eggs that have been, I think they're in, I want to say they're in salt and they're like salt cured. You've also reminded me of the hot tub monkeys though, which I'm currently Googling on my phone now. <laughs> I have such a weird attention span when these meetings come up because there's so many things. Um, I don't know if, if you'll try them in Japan. Let's see, century eggs. I think century eggs are different. Century eggs, They're, those are black as well, but they are preserving duck, chicken, or quail eggs in a mixture of clay, ash, salt, quick lime, and rice hulls for several weeks to months. And that is how they turn black. So they, they look like that, if you can kind of see it. So that's a little bit different than what um, Allison is talking about. But hey, let's try whatever comes across their plate, right? Who knows? I love eggs in general, and I'm, I've eaten pickled eggs before, which are delicious. Um, you know, the big jar of pickled eggs, and you just stick your hand in there and get one of those out. I love those. So looking forward to trying all the eggs. Um, the only one I won't try is called balut. Have you ever heard of balut before? If you've ever watched Survivor, yes. what is it? Do you know what it is, Ellie? Um, a per a fertile egg like a, yeah so it like kind of has the ba the uh chicken it 100 has to chicken grow in it. yep that's it exactly is. right <laughs> i'd actually be interested in trying that oddly enough mm -mm. that's where i draw the line i don't want to like chew a beak I'm not interested <laughs> it says the person who is heck bent on eating a guinea pig in ecuador <laughs> let's see how that goes uh, anyways, all right, so I want to mention one more thing. I actually have a PowerPoint from EF Tours that I'm going to uh, chat with you. That's our last thing on today's meeting. I saved like the most boring thing, I guess, <laughs> for last, all about deadlines and passports and that kind of thing. Um, but the other thing that I really wanted to mention to you, I know, I'm so sorry, Toby. I apologize to your guinea pig. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you is this thing that I've seen on Netflix. I'm going to share my screen with you. If you have Netflix, <laughs> I highly 100% recommend that you watch this. Let me get it out there. Sue probably knows what I'm talking about already because I think I mentioned it to Sue. <laughs> Let me just get it over here. Can you see my screen? Do you know what this is? So this is a show called Kama, an excellent adventure. This is about done, you can hear it. There you go. He's going to be born. That's Bude Kama. Ready? Great. Okay, so that's Guretama, and Guretama is Japanese for the lazy egg, <laughs> and this show was created in like 20, I don't know, 2013 maybe, it's an older show, um, and it's all about this egg who gets hatched out in a sushi restaurant, um, just a Japanese restaurant here. 
And also, if I play a little bit more of it, there is a chick that hatches out as well. Um, and so Guretama and this little chick uh, go through an excellent adventure to find their mommy. Um, and it's really funny. The episodes are only like nine to 12 minutes long a piece. Um, my children enjoy it because the egg yolk has a little butt. <laughs> Uh, it's really, it's honestly the funniest thing I've seen on Netflix in a very long time. So if you have Netflix, I'm sure it's on YouTube. Feel free to search up Guretama, the lazy egg, and their excellent adventure to try to find their mother. Has anyone watched this yet? No? <laughs> you will not regret it. Trust me. Um, so go ahead and watch it. I'm excited to find all the Guretama um, merchandise when we go to Japan to bring back. <laughs> go for there. So there you go. Good old Guretama. Sanrio, who's that? Is that the... Ah, there you go. Just showed up on your must-watch. See, they know. <laughs> what is Sanrio? Oh, hello, Kitty. Yes, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Anyways, it's super cool. The lazy egg Guretama is very like um, dry. He's very like, oh, we don't even know if we're chicken eggs. And then the little chick is like, let's go find our mommy. It's just funny. Anyways, so <laughs> there's my plug for the evening here. So I'm going to stop that guy. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns about this wild and crazy meeting so far? <laughs> All right, we have about 15 minutes left. Um, I'm going to post this obviously on the Facebook page and send out the link as well afterwards. So the last 15 minutes, 10 minutes or so here, I'm going to do this PowerPoint from EF Tours with some reminders and deadlines that we should be aware of moving forward. All right. My screen is loading. Can you see my, can you see the PowerPoint-ish? Show. Let's go to Japan. Yes, we are going to Japan, everyone. <laughs> you are in the right meeting. So our agenda for this last bit of the meeting here is some tour dates, logistics, um, COVID safety. Things are getting a little bit crazy in China. So I think they're keeping a little bit of a closer eye on what's happening in other Asian countries as well. Um, on tour expectations, I think regarding COVID, rooming, passports, and some to-dos that we have. Why we travel, you all know why we do. We just talked a lot about it. And it mostly has to do with food. So these are the dates that we're looking at here. Uh, this is uh, our tour date, our requested tour date is July 10th through the 20th. But as always, there is a window of travel involved here. So um, please don't book yourself like with the soccer tournament that you definitely have to be at in like Florida on July 21st. Um, that could be problematic. So in addition to um trying to get us you know the best flights and that sort of thing um and the best hotels and all of those types of things uh we want to take into consideration weather and flight delays and you know the i'm sure you've all seen that whole thing with southwest recently so there are some things that are out of our control which may push our travel dates prior to or further than the ones that we have listed so um, the last time EF was really great about getting those exact tour dates, but you want to just make sure that you have a little bit of a window on either end so that we can accommodate for things that are beyond our control. Any questions about that? No. Okay. So preparing to go, uh, right now we don't require, uh, we as a Girl Scout Council requires all international travelers have their COVID vaccine um, and as boosted as you can get. Uh, Japan right now, I'm not sure, is requiring it, um, but this is in place to ensure that we can travel should they require it like June 1st. We don't know. Um, we have no idea what's going to happen there. Um, we like to be as prepared as humanly possible to make sure that we can go on this awesome trip of a lifetime. And that's why Girl Scouts of Nipen Pathways is still requiring um, vaccines for international travelers. So just want to put that out there. If you go to the Japan, um, you know, the ministry website and places like that, you won't see the requirement. But for right now, that is our requirement for council. So um, you can read. I'm sure you've been reading that as I've been talking. If you want to click on that QR code, I think it'll probably take you to the, the most up-to-date things on EF's website. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, we want to be as prepared as possible. 
Uh, health and safety, these are just reminders from EF, which I think I can probably skip over. Let's see if there's anything good in here. Uh, um, I am going to be requiring medical paperwork before we go. I think some of you have had some questions and concerns about um, if you buy me a ticket. Yes, maybe. Um, if you have concerns about, uh, let's see, what was that question? I'm sorry, I got distracted by pink. The booster. Um, I think it's two doses and the booster if you can get it. Um, or I don't know, Christina, if you want to clarify, I'm pretty sure it's just the two like initial doses that are fine. Um, but if you have the booster that helps too. So there you go. Um, EF has a big COVID policy. They have health and safety policies. They have all those things on their website. I'm sure you're familiar. Oh, I'm sorry. The medical paperwork. That's right. I got distracted by pink and Brandy Carlisle. So we have had some questions about bringing, um, medications into Japan and controlled substances, things like Ritalin. Um, and some other like mood, um, you know, and, and depression, anxiety medications and things like that. Um, as far as I can tell, the research that I've done and I've spoken with EF tours, as long as you're bringing in a prescription from your doctor that's signed, the medication in its original packaging with prescription with your name on it, and no more than the amount you're going to take while you're traveling in Japan, you are good to go and you're good to bring it on the flight with you and into the country. Um, there's a whole list of things that Japan will not allow in their country, no matter what. Um, and it's like, you know, bad things that normal humans probably shouldn't have their hands on anyways. So it's doubtful that any of you are going to have to worry about that. But regarding any of your uh, sort of controlled um, substances that you might be bringing that are prescribed to you, I think for the most part, you should be fine. So don't worry about that. We did have a question about sunblock. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about that as we get closer to our packing. Um, and I think I said in this meeting a little bit prior, um, there's ways to cut down on other liquids so that you can pack more sunblock. And me, as you can see, I'm an expert <laughs> on packing things to protect my lily white skin. So uh, we're going to be chatting about that as we get a little bit closer to our trip as well. Let's see what else is going on here. Cleaning, travel protection, uh, motor bus, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things are things that we talked about actually in the meeting when I suckered you into coming on this trip with me. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, there is a good chance that masks are going to be required in some places when we travel in Japan. And that's not just Japan. It's um, a lot of Asian countries before the pandemic, uh, pandemic that was a thing to wear masks and even more so now. And it's considered polite and like respectful to wear masks in certain places as well. So before we travel, they don't have to be like the I-95 like surgical masks, um, you know, just your regular sort of like paper travel mask, I think is fine or cloth masks if you have them. Um, so as we get closer, we'll talk about this, but I think it would be a good idea to sort of get your hands on some masks right now so that you can bring them with us. Christina, did you have something to add? Um, yeah, just before you go on in topic, there's a couple of extra questions and I'm not sure which ones, um, which ones you need to like research further, but Caitlin had a question about EpiPens. Um, my, like my knee jerk is the, anyone who has an EpiPen should be keeping it on their person mm -hmm. and know how to self-administer. Yep. Obviously we could, uh, anyone can assist, but, um, that's a, a good plan of action. Um, and then there was one on insect spray and then clarification on prescription. So mean? for insect spray, I probably wouldn't waste my liquids on that. You can get wipes. Um, I've gotten them at like Walmart before in the hunting section. Um, you can get the, the um, I don't know, deep wipes or whatever. Um, and those work great. And then I usually tuck one in the back of my ponytail. The bugs are really bad too, so that they don't, they're not around my head. So I would get the wipes and then you don't have to worry about insect spray. But that's fine to carry with you if that's the question. And then prescription, um, I would say the, the better you can be with documentation regarding a medication, um, the better. So yes, when I say prescription itself, I do mean like a written note from the doctor saying what you need, saying when you take it, how much you take, um, have that signed by the doctor, and then that with the medication in its original package with your name on it. Um, I know on, on trips, like I mix Advil, and like heartburn medicine, like I know what they look like. So I mix, I mix them up sometimes in a pill bottle. Um, you can't do that. You've got to, you really have to keep them in their own packages and things like that. So that stuff is not going to work with Japan. 
If you have a severe allergy but don't have an EpiPen, we should probably talk about that offline to figure out what a good health plan for you would be, um, you know, what that allergy is and how we would mitigate that um, on the trip. Um, we're also probably gonna have to talk about an insulin pump offline as well, so there you go. Um, so any of those offline medical questions, we can certainly tackle, um, you know, in a separate phone call or we can Zoom, that sort of thing. So we can accommodate everyone. We just need to figure out how to do it. All right. So you all know the COVID-19 uh, care promise, or at least you might be familiar with it. Um, EF Tours has a really great policy. They do a lot of awesome things. You know, if someone gets COVID on the tour, um, if you're traveling solo, you don't have a parent with you, they'll, they'll fly your parent over. Um, lodging and meals and all that stuff is included. So they have a great, awesome, very thorough COVID-19 care promise. So check that out on their website um, if you want to learn more about that. So I have noticed that about 42 of you have not put your passport information into our website. <laughs> so yes, you need to do that as soon as you can. If you don't have a passport, please get one. To go tomorrow, go to the DMV, go to wherever you need to go to get a passport. Um, get that done this week. Please don't delay yourself. It costs money um, to get it expedited. And if it doesn't happen, you can't come with us. So please make sure that you get your passport in order as soon as possible. And if you put the information into the website now, you don't have to worry about it. And also, if I get 100% compliance, I don't have to talk about it anymore. So do it, just put it in there right now. Um, you want to make sure that your passport information is in there by our 110 day deadline, which is I think in March. Right now we're at 183. So just keep that in mind. I'll keep pestering you until we get to 110. That's the final deadline for pretty much everything that we have to do. Make sure that your uh, EF Traveler site, the name on that site is the same exact as it is on your passport. So for example, on my passport, my name is Elizabeth K. Schmidt. And so in, tra in the Traveler site on EF Tours, my name has to be Elizabeth K. Schmidt because that is what they're using on airplanes and hotels and paperwork and all the things. Um, at some point, I'm going to request a color copy of your passport, so you'll need to email or scan that to me so that I can make copies so that we leave it here in the U.S. should anything happen, and I will also be taking copies along with us on our trip. And then last but not least, you need to confirm that your passport info uh, name and sex on your EF account is identical to that on your passport as well. So just keep that in mind um, when you are checking your EF tours site, because I know a couple of us folks have different names um, that we prefer to go by, and that's super cool. Different genders that we also prefer to go by, that's all fine. Um, but paperwork-wise, it just has to look the same, okay? Um, and I think I just read recently that passports, you can now put X for gender if you don't prefer to identify as male or female. Um, I think that's a relatively new thing. It's kind of cool. But if you already have your passport and did not do that, um, I'm not sure that you can get it now that way. So get it past my turn. Okay. So sign off on it soon. Yeah, the name is wrong. So get all that stuff fixed now. Start the process now before it gets to be too late and you have to pay some expedited fees and things like that. Additionally, you'll owe EF tours if they get all of your stuff. Um, and it's the wrong name on your passport, they will charge you. They'll charge you change fees. So you don't want that to happen either. All right, let's see. Next, oh, rooming arrangements. So we chatted about this and I think I heard back from pretty much everybody. So um, I submitted the rooming and the busing request to EF Tours. I haven't heard back from them yet, but once they confirm, then I'll send out a final list about where everyone's gonna be and that sort of thing. Typically students are room three to four per room in a combo um, and we change it up. So I know some of you have been like, oh, I really, you know, I want to have room with Toby or I really want to room with, you know, Lizzie or whoever. Um, that's cool, but it doesn't have to be that way the whole trip. And honestly, it's nice to kind of switch things up here and there and make new friends, that kind of thing too. So there might be a hotel where there's like three people to a room and that's cool. But then the next hotel might be like, four people to a room or five people to a room, and then we have to squish it up again. So even if you've requested to be with someone the whole trip, that may not happen. So just keep that in mind um, as we're, we're moving in. It's good to be flexible. Adults, a lot of you have upgraded to single rooms. Um, 
for an extra fee and that's cool. Adult and child, there's a little bit of an extra fee for that too. So if you've asked about that, um, I think I've reconciled that with most of you. And then I've only had one family request. So those are all taken care of. There shouldn't be any other issues with rooming. Um, and if you have one, let me know. Because uh, the final deadline for any rooming requests or upgrades is day 110. Uh, that's the deadline. 110 is the deadline. I think all of you are already enrolled in this, so I'm not going to belabor this point. And then this is it, March, March 22nd. Uh, that's the day. Any rooming requests, if you have them, as I mentioned, submit your passport information online ASAP. Make sure your account is paid in full if you have a manual plan. A lot of you are on um, the repeating uh, payments, recurring payments, and that's cool. But if you have a manual plan, March 22nd is your day. If you know anyone who wants to hop on a plane and go to Japan with us on short notice, feel free to let me know. 110 days is the last day that anyone can enroll to come on our trip with us. And last but not least, get excited. Guretama, ramen. Um, all the things, matcha, moki, uh, gyoza, we're doing it. We're gonna eat our way through Japan <laughs> amongst other things, but you know, uh, anyways. So that's it. That's how we're preparing for our departure. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? Um, these are just a couple of quick, like, you know, two months, three months prior. I know I get nervous if I don't have like, what hotel are we in? Where, you know, what's happening with our flights? All of those things. But um, patience is the key here. And we typically get those things a couple of weeks out from our trip. Um, so just know that EF Tours is working on it. They've got a lot of folks traveling to Japan and other places this summer, and they're going to get us what we need in the amount of time that we need it. Oh, one more thing. I watched YouTube video, um, things that are new in Japan in 2023, and I just want to remind you that we are not checking bags. We are only bringing carry-ons. This is important to note. Christina, I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> Oh my God. So if your face is a lot like Christina's face right now, <laughs> it is okay. It's just a couple of quick reminders. Um, it's summer in Japan, so it's going to be really hot. You're not going to need to pack jeans and socks and, well, socks maybe, but like coats, and, you know, things, heavy clothing. You're not going to need that. All right. Um, we're going to talk about how to utilize your liquids uh, and leverage solids for liquids and that sort of thing. So we can save on that. Um, but also, I saw recently that the bullet train is really restricting how much luggage people can bring on the train. There's not a lot of space there, and they're they're really cutting down on people with large bags and, and baggages. And typically, they tell you to, like, mail it ahead of you to, like, wherever you're going, um, which we're not going to do because we're only there for 10 days. <laughs> so we will learn how to pack light and compact, and it's going to be amazing, and you're not going to regret checking a bag. I usually almost always check my bag on the way back though. So, um, you know, we'll talk about it as we get closer, but if you want to pack like a, I, last time I went somewhere, I packed like a little foldable, like bigger duffel kind of bag that I bought a bunch of souvenirs and stuff in. And I took that as my carry-on and then I checked my carry-on bag on the way back. So I was able to bring like more souvenirs and stuff. So, but those are all tips and tricks. Wow. So just one clarifying question. <laughs> <laughs> if I have my carry-on, mm -hmm. I'm still allowed my backpack and my small purse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Those are I good. always yeah. do that. Like usually, yeah. I only usually check things on five days or more. So <laughs> it's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to be okay. We're all going to be okay. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> ah, yes. Good, 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 good. You can fit a lot of tank tops in a rolly. Yeah, that's Little exactly area. right. That's exactly right. Well, I, I think I said this to you all before that when I went to um, Italy, it was like 100 degrees. It was so, so, so hot. And I packed dress sundresses the whole time. And it was awesome. The sweat was just like rolling off me, like, like off a duck. And it was fabulous. So be like me, pack light, wear dresses, be cool and pack that, uh, what's that stuff? Mega babe, the chafing stuff. That's good too. <laughs> but like I said, we're gonna talk about this as we get closer. This is our packing meeting that we're gonna have like May-ish. Um, so there you go. 
All right, it's after eight o'clock, it's 8.04 as usual. I'm talking everybody's ears off. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, et cetera, um, feel free to let me know. I don't see anybody else in the chat with anything. So I'm gonna post this in the Facebook page and send out an email. Um, and then as soon as I hear back from EF Tours to confirm everyone's sort of bus and people they're with and all that jazz, um, we'll send it out to you and we'll go from there. Does that sound good to everyone? <laughs> As usual, thank you for spending your Sunday night with me. Um, and welcome to Christina and Sue, who are going to be joining us, and, and all of you. Um, I'll let you know what our next meeting is about because I'm currently forgetting. So, anyways, have a great Sunday night, and I'll see you in February. Bye, everybody. Oh, let's see. Ellie, did you say it? No, Ellie's done. Okay. <laughs>